Here's how Politico's legal editor describes this historic moment. The fact is that no other person in America, if charged with a diverse panoply of malfeasance that Trump has been accused of, would enjoy the same procedural and structural advantages that Trump has harnessed to great effect as his legal troubles reached a fever pitch over the past 12 months. Michael Cohen is back with us. So, Michael, the, the inter interesting part for me in all of this is Donald Trump himself in this, in this context, that now he's saying that he absolutely will testify. He's going to be in the courtroom. Now, I could have some thoughts about his presence there as a defendant. Yeah, he should be there. But we know that that's more of a prop for him, a stage for him. How do you assess um, what Donald Trump is saying about being in the courtroom, having him there, um, you on the stand? That's a dramatic moment, and I think it'll be interesting to see him have to deal with the, the very people who worked with him, both outside of the presidency and inside of the presidency, now sitting in a witness chair saying, yeah, everything that the prosecutors are saying, that happened. Yeah. Well, first of all, he has to be there as a um, criminal defendant. He has to be there. That's part of the process. But the likelihood of Donald Trump being uh, on the stand is equal to the likelihood of me waking up tomorrow seven foot six and playing center for the New York Knicks. <laughs> it's not going to happen. How many times have we heard the same story again and again and again <laughs> that, you know, I want to I, I, I want to testify. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going yeah. to, you know, I'm going to tell the truth. The one thing that, you know, do every time Donald opens his mouth, you know that something non-truthful is coming out of it. We also know that he's not a good defendant. Mm -hmm. He's not a good witness. We watched that with the E. Jean Carroll case when he couldn't even identify um, E. Jean Carroll and confused her with Marla Maples. He is not a good witness. He's not going to take the stand. In fact, I hope that I'm wrong because I think that would be absolutely classic for America to be able to see Donald Trump on the witness stand trying to defend himself in a case that's indefensible. Well, the most interesting, I mean, I am, I wish that America could actually see these proceedings happen. Well, how they will view this is through um, sketches, through hearing from people mm -hmm. like yourself. Hopefully you'll come back after you take the stand. Um, I'm just going to ask right now on national television, <laughs> box them in real quick, that's how we do it. Um, and then they'll hear from the reporters and whatnot who are in the room, and I, I think we'll also hear, see from Donald Trump's um, social feed. This, though, and I said it when we came out at the, before we went to break, you went to prison because you were the, the facilitator of these payments. That is a misdemeanor. Just for Donald Trump to participate in falsifying business records and all of that, that is a misdemeanor under New York law. What makes this a felony that the DA's office is alleging is, in fact, that because it was to cover up an underlying crime. He's not being charged for an underlying crime, but the underlying crime is because he didn't want people to know because he thought it would interfere with the election. I think about John Edwards, and I know this comparison has been made previously, but John Edwards, who was a presidential candidate, who was, it was found out that he had a, a, a love child, a baby, with, his, with someone who worked on his campaign, and his donors were paying for that woman's lifestyle, or her home, everything, and went to court. A jury of his peers, it was a mistrial, because on the count of that he did he, was it an illegal cover-up, uh, election corruption, it, uh, they, they said no. But everything else, the jury couldn't come to a conclusion. Are you concerned that that could potentially happen here? No. But first of all, the facts and circumstances surrounding the John Edwards mm -hmm. case versus people versus Donald Trump are very, very different. Very different facts and circumstances. Yeah, there's an element to it which is similar, but it's not the same, it's not the same case at all. So you're not concerned that the jury, you think that the evidence is I'm not is so concerned because I'm not the prosecutors. Mm. This is their case. I am merely a subpoenaed non-party witness. If they called me tomorrow and said, you know what, we'd rather you don't even testify, I'd say thank you. I can now go and start my life. I mean, I'm still on paper. I couldn't get Judge Furman within which, despite the, uh, you know, Bureau of Prison, uh, my probation officer, acknowledging, yeah, let him off. It's like there's no reason for it. There's like six, seven months left. He refused to do it. Okay, whatever. It's one trust fund baby, you know, protecting another trust fund baby. I don't care at this point. The facts and circumstances are what they are. And again, it will come out at trial. And 
again, I am merely, along with a dozen other people, I'm just a witness. Mm. Let me ask you, you said you're not excited about having to testify. This is, this is a big week for you. I feel like there's been a lot of buildup to this moment, and I wonder if it's not excitement that you're feeling, what it is you're feeling going into this. Well, I hate to say this, but I think the American people, for at least the first week, maybe two, I'm still a believer that voir dire is going to be three weeks, mm -hmm. and everybody said, no way, no way. Watch. Watch what Todd Blanche and Susan Necklace do. Mm -hmm. They really know how to stretch out the system. Jury selection. Yeah, jury selection is voir dire. Um, it's going to be a little anticlimactic on Monday because everybody's thinking it's the start of the case. Yes, technically it's the start of the case, but it's not. This is just the process for jury selection, which, which is, is not going to It's this complicated, case. but it's not exciting, right? America wants excitement. This is sort of like becoming almost like the Donald Mexican. Trump reality yeah. show. Yeah. Um, and it's not supposed to be. This is our democracy that's on the line right now. And I think we have to take the case seriously which is a serious this is a serious matter whether you think that the uh the january 6th insurrection or the mar lardo document case or you know the fonnie willis case are more grotesque abuses of the law irrelevant this case is equally important and it does and will, in my opinion, ultimately hold Donald accountable. You gave me a very male answer to an emotional question, which is how are you feeling going into this week? Uh, 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 stressed, uh, ner nervous. You know, there's a swath of the American populace that are so knee deep into the cult of Donald Trump. The attacks are relentless because that's what he does. He attacks the judge, he attacks the judge's daughter, he attacks witnesses, he attacks anyone and everyone. Again, thinking that this is a positive strategy, it doesn't work. So, yeah, um, I'm concerned <laughs> and a little, you know, a little apprehensive. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.